جيتار جديد انت عزفت يا بتاع البيانو وجعت دماغنا جيتار جديد كل الناس بتفكر انها يكون عندها جيتار طيب لما يبقى انت تفكر يبقى عندك جيتار جديد هل فكرت انت عاوز الجيتار ده في ايه الاضافه اللي هيضيف لك فيها جيتار جديد لعزفك هل انت عاوزه عشان هيفتح لك افق التسجيل في الاستوديوهات مثلا هل انت عاوزه عشان هيفتح لك افق العزف الحي مثلا سواء على الانترنت او سواء على انك انت بتعزف في باند مثلا ولا الجيتار الجديد ده هيفتح لك افق انك تسجل في بيتك حاجات وتعمل مقطوعات ليك انت لازم تفكر الجيتار الجديد هيضيف لعزفك ايه وانت عاوزه ليه في القطر دلوقتي لان احنا رايحين نزور بيرمنجهام تاني اكبر مدينه بريطانيه برمنجهام نيو ستريت دي اكبر محطه قطر في مدينه برمنجهام هي موجوده في السيتي سنتر طبعا في قلب المدينه وهتلاقي كل طبعا الاسواق التجاريه حواليها وكل الاعمال وكل الشركات والمصالح الحكوميه كله في السيتي سنتر او في قلب المدينه بيانو لو عندك موهبه اقعد بقى جرب نفسك في محطه القطر شجرة أعياد الميلاد عندهم الوقت ده من السنة بيحتفلوا بأعياد الميلاد ورأس السنة دي المحطة الرئيسية في برمنجهام لازم بقى حاجة تاخدنا للمحل تاكسي ولا اوبر ولا تاكسي آه، اوبر آه، لما يكون عندك جيتار جديد آه، انت طبعا لازم تروح تشوف وتشيك على الجيتار وانت بتشتريه عشان تعرف آه، نقط معينه في الجيتار الجيتار سليم ولا لا الجيتار فيه عيوب ولا لا بالاضافه كمان لان المحل ممكن يساعدك في حاجات كتيره قوي زي ظبط الجيتار هنا آه، now i have j It's my friend, yeah. say hello to the internet, to the going, Arab guys? world there. Uh, Jay is, is working in PMT Music Shop in Birmingham and it is one of the biggest uh, stores really in the UK and Europe, uh, providing guitars and musical equipment for uh, a lot of fans around there. So I've been here a long time, I've been buying them guitars for over 20 years now. So Jay has got now a new guitar now and he's going to show us now uh, what can we do to test this guitar first okay. and see, check it when it comes from factory. What can we do to uh, check the guitar first? Okay, so first thing you want to check, obviously that there's no damage to the box that the guitar ships in or anything like that. Um, once we've checked all that and everything's okay, let's go ahead and have a look at the, at the guitar in the box. Now, <clears throat> you'll find a lot of the times that these guitars ship with, with a decent set of strings on them. In this case, it's the Dario XL strings. Um, They will also go through sometimes two or three quality control procedures. Once at the factory when they're manufactured, um, and then you know maybe up to two more depending on where they're distributed about in the world. In this case, Yamaha Europe uh, have checked this over for us as well as it being checked over. So, do factory. all guitars and all companies do these points of check when they deliver guitars or cheap guitars? Normally, don't. No, the, the, not the, subject to the, this. The majority of, of companies, even on the cheaper guitars, do this. So, um, you know, even, even if you're buying a you know sort of 150 pound entry level Ibanez guitar, it's still going to have had some level of quality control done to it. Um, every now and again, you do see certain guitars that, that slip through that aren't. 100%. Yes, that's where normally you find people bring him back to the, to the workshop yeah. and say, well, it's got something um, wrong there. Or, or even even before that, sometimes we can intercept them before they get on. So you do have your own check as well Absolutely, before. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So okay. regarding the action normally on the guitar, when, 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 when it comes from the factory, is it normally a suitable for a player or they do some sort of certain sort of height as a standard or it's up to the favorite sort of uh, action level of any player that normally when you get on a new guitar? Well, every guitar is different, you know, you, you've got, there's a lot of factors at play, you know, there's going to be type of bridge, bridge saddles, fingerboard radius, all of these play a factor into how low you can get the action on a guitar. Um, you'll find that from the factory most guitars are going to be fairly well set up and fairly playable straight out of the box. Um, but as with anything in life we've all got personal preferences so you sometimes find that you, you might, you know, if you want to get a little bit higher even we get guys all the time asking can you bring the action up? You know, you, you'd think that it'd be the other way around and people would want it, everybody's going to want it as low as possible, right? Yeah. That's not always the case. Um, so we here at PMT, we can, obviously we'll, we'll do a setup to, to the customer's needs when so it is doable after even absolutely, purchasing yeah, the guitar itself to a certain extent. Yeah. Is that done all over all types of guitars, like acoustic and electric at the same time as well? Or acoustic, they're quite limited to sort of what can you do? You're a little more limited with an acoustic guitar because, of course, you've, you've, you've only got one adjustment point on most bridges on an acoustic, yeah. and that's going to be um, typically a piece of plastic composite or bone um, that you, you end up having to actually file down sometimes. Not all, not all acoustics are like that, but they, they can be a little bit trickier to set up than an electric guitar. I see, guitar. I got you, yeah. You've yeah. got many, many more points of adjustment on an electric guitar. So you can really manipulate it that, absolutely, that much. Absolutely, yeah. And, and there's, there's absolutely no reason why you can't get an electric guitar to play and suit you. Exactly. You know? exactly. Um, what do you think is the most important thing in an electric guitar? The first thing I always look for before I even plug a guitar in is how well it resonates. So if I, you know, if, even if I just sit with the guitar for a few minutes and play it unplugged, you know, if I can get it to, to resonate, I don't know whether this is going to be in tune. Oh yeah. So it means without even amplification yeah, or yeah, effects yeah. or anything, you can find the guitar is already resonating Absolutely, that yeah. good. When I, when I bought my last electric guitar, um, I, I happened upon it really by accident, but um, it was actually from this store as well while I was working here and I sat down, did what I've just done and it you, sometimes you, you can actually feel it resonate through your chest when you, and that's what I always look for because if, if it's going to do that you've got a pretty good idea that when you plug it in it's going to do everything you need it to do, right? Do you think you have to have a connection with the guitar as soon as you, absolutely. you start yeah, it? Absolutely. If you play the guitar in the store and you don't find this connection do you normally go and buy it even with a big name? <sighs> it, it, that's a tough one. I mean, I over the years I've bought guitars just because, you know, I, you know, it might have been a Fender, or a Gibson, or whatever, because that's what I wanted at the time. Now it didn't necessarily mean that was the right guitar for me. Had I put a little bit thought, bit more thought, a little bit more effort into it, you know, maybe I could have found one that was better suited, and I maybe would have kept it for a little bit longer. But I, I honestly do think that. You, everybody has got different things that resonate with them. That's why it's such a such a unique yeah. personal thing that we do. You know, I'm asking this question because you get a, I get a question always. I've been asked, "What is the best guitar for me? What is the best guitar I can buy?" Which is really a personal preference. If you absolutely, and the the thing is as well that that's tantamount to saying, you know, walking into a restaurant and saying, "Okay, what's the best thing on the menu?" Yeah, your no. waiter's not going to know what you like to eat, or mm. just, you know what I mean. So it's it's the same. Not logic, same is it? No, not at all. So you've you've got to you have got to approach it with some logic. You've got to figure out what you like from a guitar, um, and and take it from there. And it, it's not an easy process all the time. Sometimes you might just look out and find something that, that just works for you straight away. Do you think time. pickups are, are, are quite important in the guitar yeah, or you still can do something with it about it by effects and amplifiers? You, you can, but I mean it's it, it, it's a lot easier to to get a good healthy signal from a guitar if the guitar is fundamentally well built, if the woods work together, you know, because even though a lot of, especially guitars of this type, you know, you're going to see, you know, typically an Asher, an older body, maple neck, and in this case, yeah, an ebony fingerboard on this one. Um, you know, it's a fairly standard composition for an electric guitar. 
the big variable here is no two pieces of wood are ever the same. I see. So even two guitars from the same manufacturers could yeah. even taste the same I mean, slightly. Exactly. But years ago, when I bought I bought a Fender Strat, right? And a good friend of mine was selling it. It was a, a white American Fender Strat, really lovely guitar. But I thought, just to be sure, I'm going to try. I'm going to try a few different examples. Over the course of the next two months, I'll try ten American Standard Strats, white ones with, you know, maple necks, rows of fingerboards. I could probably tell you two different things about each guitar. Dear me. So, it, it, you know, it, it, it does make a difference. You, you have to find the right one for you. All right, let's bring it short now for the guys because uh, they need an answer. What is the guitar that you reject when you go and check a guitar and then you say, oh, that doesn't work? Okay, so there's a few things you want to look for. First of all, how well the frets are finished. If you run your fingers up and down the fingerboard, if you can feel any sharp bits along the way, then it, you, it's time to reject it. You know, you, you can work your way around that, but there's going to be better examples. You know, um, also if there's any electrical failure, you know, anything in the pickups that aren't working, things like that, that's another no-no because that's something that you've got to fix. Any dead spots on the neck? What do you mean by dead spots? So dead spots is where you know, if, for instance, if I play if I play a D note. You know, A string, fifth fret, D note. If that note is not ringing true or if it chokes out in any way, that's a dead spot. That note's I dead see. on the neck. If so it was even less resonant than yeah, the other yeah, resonant. Yeah, so you yeah. could be in a scale um, or something and one note just slips yeah, out. And yeah, that's, that's it. it. Um, or is if, that comes because one fret is a high or one fret is low or something yeah, like that? Yeah, you, you, you could have a high fret on there. It might not be crowned properly. There's, there's a few different factors into uh -huh. it. Um, sometimes even in, in extreme heat or cold, the lift as well, believe it or not. So the actual fret will lift out of the fingerboard. I've seen that happen quite a lot as well. Oh, I see. Um, so yeah. Um, so that's the fingerboard. What yeah. else could you reject the guitar for? Uh, sometimes if, if you've got an improperly cut nut or if there's any material on the saddles of the bridge that's causing friction points, the guitar won't stay in tune. That's another thing to look for as well. So the, the bottom line is what I'm getting at, I suppose, is go to a shop, try as many guitars as you can, find the right one for you. That's, yep. that's the best advice I can ever give to anybody. I can come to this conclusion as well. Yeah, yeah really, it's not something you can, can buy really uh, online unless you try what, what's exactly what you're buying. And you, you can buy pretty much anything you like online these days, but the one thing that I'd recommend you don't buy online is a guitar. A guitar. The reason being, you, you need to come and... Connect and, with and it. Con yeah, and connect with it. You need to come and figure out whether it works for you, both tonally and, and in feel, you know. Yeah, coming to this buy now, what's this guitar do you think is a special thing about it than any other guitars? What makes it special, this sort of Variax coming from Line 6? Well, first of all, this is a Variax designed by James Tyler. Um, so it's got the same Variax controls as you're going to find on, on some of the, the entry-level Variaxes, but you've got a fundamentally just a phenomenally well-built guitar um, even if you take the Variax electronics out of the equation just using the magnetic pickups you've got a fantastic range of tones on it and then when you do factor in the Variax technology you've got various different tunings that you can use the guitar in you've got different models of guitar ranging from Les Pauls Gretsch, Rickenbacker, all the way through to things like Guild 12 strings, banjos even, you know, so you, you've got such a wide range of tones you can get from this guitar. Just on top of what Jay's saying, uh, this guitar particularly is a guitar with electronic component inside and it can imitate other sounds of famous uh, brands of guitars and famous streamlines of different instruments being used all over 50 years or 60 years now from now and try to get it closer to it that you will have like sort of more than 50 instruments with you when you're going on stage in there so it, it makes guitarists really go in for a, a gig with only one guitar instead of about 10 of them that's right yeah great bit of gear Thanks very much, Jay. Thanks very much. The Luat is a hot cup gaula in the محل بتاع الأدوات الموسيقية محل كبير جدا في برمنجهام وهي شركة كبيرة جدا في أوروبا وفي إنجلترا اسمها PMT. هاخدكم في الشركة ديت ونتفرج على اللي ممكن تشوفوا إيه في ستور كبير جدا للجيتارات أو للأدوات الموسيقية في بلد أوروبي.
I do find a bit of easy shopping there, okay?